Um, you want to click uh, this little button down here. This is called the Timeline Index. And if you click that button, it'll reveal a panel and uh, or pane. Excuse me. Adobe says calls them panels. Apple calls them panes. Anyway, you'll have notice a new button called Roles. Now, the first thing is, is they've made it simply very easy to identify what is what. And the way you do that is by clicking on the role. So, for example, I want to locate all my titles. By the way, scroll up just a little bit here. If I want to see all my titles, I'll go ahead and click on that. Notice it highlights all my titles. If I want to see all my dialogue, select, and it will then highlight my dialogue. So it essentially puts a spotlight on those things that you want to quickly um, highlight. So here I have my music, and it's highlighting my music. And then let's see, we have effects too. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and you'll notice that... Uh, there are my effects highlighted. Now, the, the cool thing is, I, I'm looking at this, and part of exporting this is QC. Which ones are my effects? Well, if I'm familiar with this project, I'm outputting this. I know that this really, this really should be an effect. I think it's tagged to something else. But it's very simple to add to a selection. It's like, for example, if I selected this and then go to the Modify menu, uh, you'll go down here, and you'll see that uh, it's assigned as dialogue. Now, this, bring, this begs a question, not begs a question, it brings up an important. How are these clips being assigned roles? Okay? How does that ha process happen? When you import um, media off of a card, if you bring it in off the tape, by default, those items, those clips become tagged as dialogue roles. If, you, if your music coming in from a music library, it'll be tagged as a music role, or if it's from a sound effects library, effects. So there are certain things that will be automatically tagged. In fact, we're going to start seeing more camera manufacturers and more third-party hardware makers just build these metadata, what we call sidecard files, right into their hardware. So that they'll just come across and you can actually set them up ahead of time before you actually even ingest them. But again, we're at the beginning stages of this. Um, but in this case, this particular clip was mis misallocated or misassigned. So all I really need to do is go to Tiny Roll. It's like, I really want to make this part of my effects group, and just like that, it will now be highlighted with the effects. So now I can quickly see that those are all my effects roles. Okay? Um, these clips right here, um, these are the so-called international uh, music, and right now they're disabled. And the nice thing about this is that I created sub roles, and we'll talk about them up in a minute right now. Notice the domestic, the domestic music is selected, but if I want to see the international, I can just go ahead and click this, and, and, and it will then make them enabled, and I can turn off domestic, and then I can, I can quickly see. And don't you do this a lot with Trackme Center? You can click the light, and you can quickly see what's your domestic, what's your international. Just like that, one click. Look, at, here's another example. Um, up here, I have two sets of titles for the same thing. This particular um, example, I have... Uh, title, and this is a Spanish title, and you can, I don't know if you can see it, there's, there's this, there's this, <laughs> there's a <the> Spanish. <laughs> Sorry, that was my, I just Googled, yeah, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> and all right, all right, all right. Um, and all right, then there's, uh, there's my, uh, there's my, uh, well, anyway, you get it. So <laughs> here's the thing, this is where sub roles come in, it's pretty fun. I want to be able to export separate title roles for my Spanish and my English. So what you could do is go to the Modify menu and go down to here and choose Edit Roles. And when you go into Edit Roles, you could then choose uh, Title. And I've already created two sub-roles already, English and Spanish. But I can create yet another sub-role. I can say, I don't know, I'm from Arizona. All right, Apache. All right? <laughs> so now... <laughs> <laughs> so I literally can have an Apache sub-role, so all my Apache subtitles will then appear, and I can select them and turn them off with one click. Now, just so you can see this, um, for music, notice I've already created two sub-roles, one for domestic, one for English. I can go further. I can create, you'll notice these clips over here on the, that are connected. I can create B-roll sub-roles. I can, there's, the sky's the limit. I can organize these items however I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. I want you to see this. So I'm going to, over here, I'm going to select, select this clip, which is the uh, Spanish version, and, um, and then over here, select this one. I think they're already assigned. But all you do is you just select 
you just select the items you want to include in a sub role, and then from the mod modify menu, you just assign, assign the role. Right here, they're already assigned Spanish. And that's it, you just assign how you want. With regard to music and effects and dialogue, you have really nice shortcuts for that. In fact, let me, uh, let me zoom out here. One little gotcha, if you, don't, if you don't want this highlight on, if you close the uh, index window and you can't seem to un, not turn the highlight off, what I've learned is you actually have to come in here and click off, uh, click off um, one of these items to get them to not highlight, or hit shift command A, and then they won't highlight. And there's, I can figure out any other way to do it, but you gotta kinda go back into the index to do that. Anyway, um, what's interesting is I have these, these effects here and I can assign them. Let's say I can create, I can create a sub role just for those. In fact, this is, this is unique to Final Cut uh, 10. I know these are all Civil War artillery sound, effect, or, uh, sound effects. I can select that audio. I'm going to control click on the clip and um, I'm going to create a compound clip out of that. And what's interesting about this workflow is it's, it's made essentially what I call a submix. So I now have a master volume control for all the audio clips inside this. And then I can then go further and say, all right, that compound clip is, doesn't make sense to anybody. Um, I'm gonna give it a unique sub role. So I'm gonna go to the modify menu. I'm gonna go to edit roles. And I'm gonna create a top level sub role. And I'm gonna say new audio role. And let's see here, there we go. And over here I'm gonna type um, battle uh, let's see, can, uh, the same issue Mark has a, their battle. Da, da, come on, t I know. Oh, God, da, da, battle. I'm going to just do this. Well, come on. S, F, X. There we go. All right, good. So there it is, battle sound effects. Now, go ahead and close that. Now, that compound clip can now be essentially roll tagged as battle sound effects. Okay, like that. And you're like, well, okay, um, but it still says compound clip. Well, what's really neat is if you click this little light switch down here, uh, you now have this new feature to either show the clip name or for the pop-up you can assign, you can say, show me that instead of the clip name, show me what the roles of every clip is. So just like that, I can see that's my battle sound effects. I can see in my domestic, everything's right there. Uh, very, very handy. Now. A couple of other things that are, are really useful that I want to point your attention to is that when you, again, remember I said when you bring them in, they're automatically tagged. Well, now you have some new sorting mechanisms uh, using this little gear, this little gear button. You go ahead and click on that. You can now say group clips by, look at this, rolls. And instantly, by choosing this, it breaks things down in your event library by rolls. You can see my dialogue, my music, everything is, is, is right there. Now that's that's music, that's, that's true, these are all music, but sometimes, by the way, the best way to see what's going on, because I'm in one uh, keyword collection, but if I go to the top level here, I can see, all right, all right, there's my dialogue, um, okay, dialogue, wait a minute, that's a guitar hum, that shouldn't be tagged as a dialogue. So it's nice, and this is what I want to point out, it only, oh, this is something an assistant editor would do, and for me, it's, I'm one and the same. Um, you know, I can like, quickly see that's in the wrong category, so I can now go to modify, assign roles, and say, you know what, that really needs to be what? Music. And, and then what will happen is, should move, oh. oh, did I? Sorry. So modify, what did I say, assign roles. There's a keyboard shortcut? There is, there's a keyboard. In fact, look at the keyboard sh shortcut. It's, um, it's a D, M, and E, control option D, control option M, so uh, control option E. So, there we go. There we go. So now, uh, that, that particular clip is now part of the music tagged as a music role. And why this is important is it just takes a few minutes to go through all your library material, and then when you drop them in to edit them, they're properly tagged with the right role. Okay? You don't have to do it. You can do it here in the library, or you can do it after the fact in the actual timeline. Now, here's where it gets really, this is the part that's just amazing um, to me. Now, when it comes time to share, get these out to the world. You're going to go, and there's a new, it now says export media. It doesn't say export movie, it's export media now. So it's a slight change in terminology. So what I'm going to do is open this up, and it takes a second to open up. 
But here's, a, here's where it gets cool. Under export, it says roles as multi-track. What it'll do is take the roles, your video, your titles, your effects, however you have them grouped by roles, and it will take them and it will embed them into a QuickTime movie. So you'll get one QuickTime movie with all the tracks embedded in it. So you can open the movie and then playing out through the proper hardware, it'll then properly channel out to one or two, three or four, what have you. Um, the other thing is add roles as separate files. Let's choose this for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and choose roles as separate files because what that'll do is literally create the independent stems. You'll get separate video, separate titles, separate um, essentially music, di uh, music dialogue and effects. Now here's where the power comes in. This middle button right here called roles, this is, this will take all the labor out of what I just showed you in Final Cut 7. When I click the roles button, I'm gonna say, all right, roles are separate, and then here's how I set it up. Now, video, I can say, all right, I want, hmm, I know I want video out, and it'll export just a video track, but what if I wanted an international version? In other words, I want the video, but I want the Spanish titles burned into the video. You can say, all right, video, and I'm gonna choose Spanish. Look what it's gonna do. It says video in Spanish, which means that when I export this out, it's gonna give me a video track with just the Spanish subtitles, not the English ones. And then if I wanted to go back, I can even have it do an English version. So it'll actually burn the English version in, okay? If you go to titles, you can say, you know what? I'm not sure, maybe they're gonna want the English version as a separate movie. You can say English. And what that will do is it'll create a separate standalone movie of just the English titles, okay? If you choose dialogue, you can say, well, which ones? All right, well, all dialogue. If you go to music, say, well, do you want to export to domestic or the international? Well, uh, it's an international. I see video Spanish. I'm going to go with that. So it's going to make an international export, right? It affects the same thing. And then you can also choose whether you want surround, monitor, or stereo stems when you export this. You click next. You give it a name and save it. Now, of course, um, I don't want to set you watch that whole export process because it's really, I know it's really fun and exciting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've kind of pre-exported them out so you can see essentially uh, what happened. So I'll open this up and first of all, let's look at, let's look at the QuickTime movie first. Okay, so here's the QuickTime movie and when it, when it came out of Final Cut Pro, it even named it properly. We can wear music effects dialogue video. It named it. So what I'm going to do and I, Everybody in this room should still be running QuickTime 7 on their, on their Mac. <laughs> it's true. And the reason is uh, you, get, uh, uh, you get feature like this. When you press Command J, you'll be able to see all the tracks. So for example, I want to see, let's say, uh, I want to what, see, I think that's the effect. So I'm going to use this extract button just to pull this, that track out just so you can, do I have audio? Let's see. There we go. Okay. Okay. So this one. What's okay? This. What's this? We'll extract this one. Let's see what this one is. I think this might. So that's just the music. Nothing else. Okay. Great. So you get the idea with that. Essentially, they're uh, QuickTime movies with all the stems essentially as part of the movie. Now, what's that? It didn't have to because it's embedded in the movie. And the, the proper hardware will be able to interpret those tracks. That's another story. Now, under stems, I want you to see this. This is, these are the stems, okay? Uh, here is the Weekend Warriors Master, just the movie. Okay, here we go. So here's the movie. When I get to, remember, I, I chose in those export options using the, just the export. You notice it just exported the title that's the Spanish, and it burned it into the video. Okay? It didn't include the English one. Now, I could have exported out just the video and had the, I could have had the, uh, the title track as a separate track altogether, and that's what I did with English. I don't know if you noticed, watch me do that, but I essentially did that with the English version. I exported a, a standalone graphics track of just the English version of those lower thirds. There it is, right there. They come in and there it is. Now here's the, the key is, when you export this out, under the export options, here's important, there's an important point. So write this down. You need to export as ProRes 444. Why? Because that's the only codec that supports the alpha channel. So once, if you choose that, then you drop bring this into After Effects, any app that supports the alpha channel, all that, all that transparency data will be there, 
Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> there, there's that. And then, of course, notice here, and you were asking about proper or labeled. Here, here you can quickly, it, it labeled everything properly. I know what's my dialogue. I know what my effects are. I just, you know, open it up, and I can essentially do a quick Q QC of my, uh, of, my, uh, of my file and make sure it's right before I, I send it off. So, to me, the ability to not just organize, but quickly locate and then export this, I mean, it's literally taking hundreds of clicks away from you and made it much simpler now to provide uh, music, dialogues, and effect stems for your Pro Tools artists, your, um, for broadcast master control, your, your submasters, you know, that you're going to be distributing kind of overseas. Just, it makes it really a couple of click process. And I think, to me, that's, that's going to be the biggest story uh, with Final Cut Pro 10.01. Yeah, yeah. Uh, out of curiosity, what is the time code in that movie? Is it your sequence time code? It's, yeah, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, it is the sequence time code. And if you don't take any further action, it, it uses the default uh, zero base time code. And one of the features that they added to Final Cut 10.01 is the ability now to set a starting time code that's empty base. So you can uh, essentially, you have to go back to the main library, you select the project, like I'm doing here, the film strip, and then there's, click the, click the inspector icon or press command four, and there's a little wrench. If you click the wrench, it will then bring up a window, and this is where you set your starting time code. So this is now you can then set it, and then the, time, and then the, uh, the uh, files will be properly time code stamped. So that's a new feature. Good, good question. There was another question. Yeah. It's all the media, uh, but remember, if, if that's going to be a problem, remember, you can do a pass where it's just the titles. But the titles have to be ProRes 444, okay? And just uh, to reiterate, how much time do I have? Like a few minutes? Uh, you're up Okay. So, <laughs> let's see. So, um, yeah, just make sure when you go to share me, I just, I'm going to bring this up because this, this is probably the most important window. Uh, let's see, under video codec. This is where you make your choices. There it is. Okay. Uh, 